Hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson, Grade 6, Module 4, Lesson 9, Writing, Addition and Subtraction Expressions. Today's student outcomes, students write expressions that record addition and subtraction operations with numbers. Also during today's lesson, I'm going to try to follow as closely as I can all the examples and exercises that go along with your materials. So let's begin. Example number one, create a bar graph to show three plus five. There's my three. There's my five. And I'm gonna darken it in just a little bit here so you can see where I've joined the two. And this is three plus 5. So here's a bar graph to illustrate 3 plus 5. How would this look if we were asked to show 5 plus 3? There's my 5, and again I'm going to darken it a little bit. There's my 3. So this time we have a bar graph to illustrate 5 plus 3. Are the two expressions equivalent? 3 plus 5 equals 8. 5 plus 3 equals 8. So we know that 3 plus 5 equals 5 plus 3. So yes, they are equivalent. On to example two. How can we show a number increased by two? So a number can be represented by a letter. I'm going to choose the letter A for this example. And I can show it as A plus two, or I can show it as two plus A. And we know that because order does not matter in addition. So to represent that with a bar diagram or a model, here is my A, here is my plus 2, so this whole thing represents A plus 2, and naturally you could show it the other way as well. Here is my 2, here is my A, and I have 2 plus A. And because A is a variable, I just made it a little bit bigger than my other pieces. I could have even made it larger than what you see there. Example three, let's show the sum of M and K. So sum means to add, so we can show it as M plus K. We can also show it as K plus M. So which property can be used or is used in examples one through three to show that both expressions are equivalent? And of course that property is the commutative. property of addition. Which basically states that the order does not matter when you are adding. Example 4. How can we show 10 minus 6? Well, we're going to begin by drawing a bar diagram to model this expression. So for starters, I'm going to need to draw a tape diagram with 10 pieces. And I'm going to pause the video while I do that. So here's my completed tape diagram. I have 10 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to bracket that information off at the top. And we'll put a little number 10 here. And then to show that we're taking away 6, I'm going to make a little mark right about here, and I'm going to color these ones in. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the ones that I've colored represent the ones that I've taken away. So what expression would represent this model? We'd have 10 minus 6. Next question, could we also use 6 
minus 10. Well, let's see. Here's our tape diagram. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So can we start with 6 and take away 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we can't, um, in this instance, the answer is no. We cannot also use 6 minus 10 because 10 minus 6 is not equal to 6 minus 10. Example 5. How can we write an expression to show 3 less than a number? Okay. So we're going to start by drawing a diagram to model the subtraction. Are we taking away from the 3 or the unknown? So it says 3 less than a number. So we're going to do the number. This bar diagram represents the number because we don't know it. And we're going to take 3 away. So this time I'll put my 3 here. And this section here, this is the section we're taking away. So the complete bar diagram represents the number. And then we subtract 3 from the unknown number. So yes, we are taking 3 from the unknown number. And the expression that would accompany that would be n minus 3. So when you read these questions, just be careful. It's almost like a mystery and you have to kind of unsolve or solve, excuse me, unsolve, solve the riddle here. So it's 3 less than a number, okay? Example number 6. How would we write an expression to show the number C being subtracted from the sum of A and B? So we're going to start by writing the expression for the sum of a and b. So the sum of a and b would be a plus b. Of course, we also know we could do b plus a. So either one is OK. Now show c being subtracted from the sum of those two letters. So we can put a plus b minus c, or again we could put b plus a minus c. So it really didn't matter here in the beginning because order didn't matter for the subtraction, so both answers are accurate. Number seven, write an expression to show c minus the sum of a and b. So this one's a little different. We're going to start out by showing c minus the sum of a plus b. So this time, why are the parentheses necessary in this example and not in the other examples? Well, the problem is here, we want to subtract the complete sum of a and b from c. If we didn't, if we left it just like this, we'd be taking away just the a and then adding on b. But we want to take the sum of a and b away from c. So you do need to have the parentheses in place. So we'll take a moment to prove that. We'll replace the variables with numbers to see if c minus a plus b is the same as c minus a plus b. So for this example, we'll make c equal to 8. Um, we'll do, let's see, do a equal to 3, and b equal to 2. So we'll plug them in, both of them. We'll do our first one, c minus a plus b. And I'm going to put my 8 here, and then my 3 plus my 2. And let me set up the second one, that's c minus a plus b. And we'll put in our answers again, 8 for c, a is 3 and b is 2. So we'll see what happens when we solve these. In this first one, we need to do the sum in parentheses, and then 8 minus 5 is 3. And on this side, we have 8 minus 3 is 5 plus 2, so we'll do this first, plus 2 is 7. And we can see that 3 is not equal to 7, 
So yeah, those parentheses are pretty important when solving a problem like this. So on to our exercises. What I'd like you to do here is I'll read off each one, pause the video, solve it, and then come back and we'll look at the work together. Number one, write an expression to show the sum of 7 and 1.5. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. So you had two choices here. You could do 7 plus 1.5 or 1 and 5 tenths, or you could have written 1 and 5 tenths plus 7, because we remember the rule that order does not matter in addition. Example, excuse me, exercise 2. Write two expressions to show w increased by 4, then draw models to prove that both expressions represent the same thing. So once again, pause the video. Take a few moments to solve and come back when you're ready. So we have two ways we can show it. We can show W plus 4. We can also show, show 4 plus W. And our two drawings, we could have W here plus our 4. Or we could have our 4 plus our W. And just to reiterate from earlier, the size of the W piece doesn't matter that much. I would just make it a different size than your four piece just to indicate that it's a variable. Okay? On to number three. Write an expression to show the sum of A, B, and C. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. So let's see what you came up with. We could do A plus B plus C. We could do A plus C plus B. We could do B plus C plus A. B plus A plus C. And the last two, we could do C plus A plus B. Or we could do C plus B plus A. So if you didn't get all six of those possibilities, I know it asks for an expression, but go ahead, write all six down so that we can further understand that order does not matter in addition. Number four, write an expression and a model showing three less than P. Pause and come back when you're ready. All right, let's see how you did. So showing three less than P, so that's really P minus three, it wouldn't be three minus P. That's incorrect, because this is saying 3 less than the number P, or the letter P. So to represent that, I draw one long bar. This represents P. And the stuff that I take away, that's my 3. So I have P, the whole, minus my 3 here to represent it as a model. Number 5. Write an expression to show the difference of 3 and P. So here you're going to write it exactly how you see it. 3 minus P. And that's all there is to that one. We don't need a model to accompany it. Number 6. Write an expression to show 4 less than the sum of G and 5. So pause the video. Take a moment. Go ahead and solve. If there's more than one way to show it, please show both ways. So 4 less than the sum of g and 5. Okay. So I can do g plus 5 minus 4. And I could also do 5 plus g minus 4. No parentheses are needed because we're doing the subtraction second. On to number 6. Write an expression to show 4 decreased by the sum of g and 5. So this time we're going to show 4 decreased by the sum of g and 5. So pause the video once again. If there's more than one way to solve it or show that expression, please show both ways. So let me start off here. I have 4 decreased by the sum of g and 5. Or I could show it 4 decreased by the sum of 5 plus g. So on the second part here, order did not matter, but it does in fact matter 
on the subtraction side, so we have to have the parentheses second. Okay. On to number eight. Number eight, I copied over six and seven just so we could answer the question for number eight. Should exercises six and seven have different expressions? Why or why not? So we can see that they're kind of similar, but we're, we have to ask ourselves, should they be different? Why or why not? So go ahead, pause the video, take a few moments in, and write down in words where you can show an example of why they should have different expressions or they shouldn't have different expressions. Alright, so here's what we have. It's kind of a long-winded response and as long as you have something close to it, that's fine. The expressions are different because one word includes decreased by, which we can see here, decreased by, and the other has the words less than, okay? The words less than give the amount that was taken away first, where the word decreased by gives us a starting amount and then the amount that was taken away. Okay, so when you say decreased by, you have, you have your starting amount and then you're decreasing it by a certain amount. And on the other one, we have four less than our starting amount. So it's kind of wordy, wordy, but yes, they should be written differently. You guys did a fantastic job today. Let me pour in some paint here. Give you guys a little color. Let me get a shape here, give you a little smiley face or something. Uh, let's see what I can find here. And how about this big smiley face today? Oh, he's a... Let's get some color so you can see him a little better. There we go. How about a little fill color? And there he is. Great job, everyone.